Hey everyone, Fuse Mike Comnaccia. Last week, we took a look at some newly introduced crypto APIs to help you with authentication and talked a little bit about some of those plans. So definitely go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. In this video, I wanted to show you how you could use them from within Unity with a public SDK that's available to wrap around that. One of the core advantages here is that this provides you a secure way to do wallet authentication without relying on a WebGL build. And you can focus on standalone builds, which I think is really where the current market is as far as creating, say, mobile games or PC games, et cetera, et cetera. And these APIs really enable you to do that securely and connect to wallets and read the state of the blockchain in all of that fashion without requiring a connection to the web browser through a browser-based wallet. So I'll walk through that today from the Unity perspective, which is not really that complicated, uh, just to give you a taste of how you can start working with this moving into the future. So starting from a fresh Unity project here, we'll actually wanna head over first to our, well, if you want, you can take a look at the APIs just like last week's video. So let's head over to the Web3 Unity SDK. There'll be a link to that down in the description below. And it's, like I said, very simple here as a wrapper around. Um, and as I should really in last week's video, if we just wanna quickly take a look at the package, this is just really just one script. The Web3 Manager has a bunch of asynchronous functions. It is just a standalone class, so it doesn't even need to be a component. And you can call it with a bunch of static fields. And it's all it's doing is making a web request by passing in the correct arguments and you can call it as an asynchronous function. So that's what's happening here. It's really designed to, to just be super simple. And the way you get it is by heading here. Let's go to click code, copy this link, head to Unity, package manager, give that a second to load, and then click add package from Git URL and paste that in. That's gonna go ahead and pull in this package into your project here. You can see that it's already set up. It shouldn't take that long because like I said, the package itself is pretty small. So that'll get you the API installed. Let's go ahead and close that here. And you should see that now within your packages with the Fuse VR Web 3. So we have that, as I mentioned, it's a static Web 3 manager class. So really all we need to do is go ahead and create a C-sharp script for, let's just call it authentication. All right, I'll go ahead and call this off. Let's go ahead and open this up. Everything runs off of asynchronous calls. So what we just need to do is on start, what we'll do is call this a, an asynchronous function. We don't need to update really. We'll go ahead and pull in using fusedvr.web3. And we'll say if await web3 manager.login and do something. Okay, and for login, you can see here we need an app ID and an email. So as I mentioned in our previous video, the app ID is something that's currently being worked on, but I just wanted to provide these APIs uh, available today to start building upon and seeing if that is really what you need for your own standalone games and play to earn games. But uh, until we get an app ID, we can really put whatever we want in here. So app ID, and then we need an email. So the email is of course important to actually make sure that you can get the magic link to do the authentication. Just like last week, I'm just gonna pull up a temporary email that we can take a look at. Go ahead, copy paste this in here and we'll paste that in. So what this is gonna do is exactly the same as the APIs that we showed last time. It's gonna call the login API and it's a long polling request to await until a user actually goes ahead, opens say their, their phone and authenticates and uses the wallet to do that full authentication. So uh, that's what's gonna go here and then you'll get a true or false return back on whether or not that was successful. If it's successful, then I can say call any of the Web3 APIs from there, right? So I can say Web3 Manager dot, say get NFT, get ERC20, get Native Balance. So let's, let's say call this one. Again, it's an await because everything here is asynchronous and you need to pass a chain. So let's go ahead, pass the chain. 
And here you could say something hypothetically like, uh, believe, yeah, okay, so it's a string is balance. And let's just go ahead and debug log that out. Balance. Okay. So something very, very simple here to just go ahead and get the balance. Again, exactly as I mentioned, if we wanna go take a look at the actual methods that are available here, you have get native balance, get address, get ERC20, get native and lock in. So you can call any of those after the lock in function. Now that we have something, let's go ahead and let this compile. Double check for errors and we will create an empty drag our auth script on. Let's go ahead, click run. Okay. So what that does, because this is happening on start, it should have now sent us an email. There you go. Go ahead, click that. Let's click verify. That's going to go ahead and take us to this Swagger UI here for the authentication purposes. Go ahead, log into our MetaMask, pick whatever account, connect verify and if i head back into unity now that we've got this token you can see the balance was already called which is exactly again what we showed from last week's video because this is identical so now i'm able to read the state based on the user's authentication that user we proven because of the signature that they actually do own the wallet that they claim to own. And so if they own NFTs, ERC20 tokens, you are now able to verify that and ensure the user actually owns and says who they are. So that's how you to do it in a nutshell. It's designed to be super simple from an implementation standpoint. You can again, augment on top of this, right? So let's say I want to create a form where a user inputs the email address. You could do that with the Unity UI and make this dynamic. It's designed to, to be used in that regard and be very flexible. Well, one, one quick thing before we wrap up, I'm just gonna quickly pull open the Web3 Manager from the package, or you could look at this in Git. I've left a temporary function in here for decoding the token. Uh, feel free to use this or kind of integrate or use this as an example. What this is gonna go ahead and do is just like I showed the JWT token in last week's video, this is gonna act as a decoder so that you can read the state of everything. So if you want the expiration date, if you want the session ID, if you want the actual address really easily without going to the, the backend server for that, you could decode that and get all of that information right here. And the token is also saved here statically. Um, and feel free to edit this. It's, it's really just more here to be a template to, to really get some, some of these REST APIs easily integrated. But from a practical point of view, it's, it's really meant to be editable and easy to use. So I would love to hear if you have a chance to, to mess around with these APIs. Uh, let me know down in the comments below, um, or uh, if you have questions about this, definitely feel free to ask over on Discord. I think that'll wrap it up for now, but thanks so much for watching and looking forward to seeing how you start integrating these APIs. Until next time, this has been Fuseman, and I'm signing.